So I'm reminded this week, after a long week of recording, shooting music videos, and having to just wear myself thin, that there are few things in life that just bring me joy the way a loud guitar amp does. I love modelers, I love in-ears, I love all of the great technology that we have access to. I've said it a million times, I'll say it a million more, there's never been a better time to be alive and to be a guitar player. But all of that said, sometimes all you need is an amp in its sweet spot, just loud enough, with a guitar you love, and a little bit of feedback. So today I'm going to show you my favorite amp, the Sir Badger 18, and why it could be the most underrated amp on the market. Let's jump into the video. Hi there. I'm here to interrupt my own video to tell you to smash like, hit the subscribe button, and comment on this video. One, you should smash like if you like loud guitar amps. Two, you should subscribe because if you're here and you have found my channel, then you probably like gear, you probably like guitars, and you probably also like loud amps. And three, I need you to just comment on this video. Let me know what you think. Give me your honest thoughts. You like loud amps? You like quiet amps? Do you like this amp? Let me know. All right, here we go. Roll video. So as you may or may not know, John Sir is most popular, I would say, for building guitars. He builds a lot of really great guitars, a lot of really great players, and some of my favorites like Joey Landreth, Ariel Posen, and Mateus Sato all play his guitars. And I particularly really like the way he approaches them. See, he takes classic designs, makes improvements, Maybe to some people it's not rocket science, but there's just something about his implementation that makes the guitars really special, at least to me. I've played a lot of different Fender style guitars and Sirs are by far my favorite. But a lot of people don't really know him for building amps, or maybe just think that they also build amps and pedals. But I think he's just as great of an amp designer. See, I've played a lot of different amps. A lot of different amps from vintage to modern to boutique and there's just not been many that have really really excited me every time I've played one but the exception to that rule is this amp behind me see this Badger 18 is a really simple amp there's not a whole lot to it now it has six knobs which is a little bit more maybe than your very simple simple amps but it essentially just has a power scaling control, a drive control, a bass control, a middle control, treble, and gain. So you essentially just have a tone stack, and the drive control acts as more or less a master volume, and the gain does exactly what you think it would do. It adds gain. It makes the amp sound dirtier. And the thing that I've realized about myself is that I don't really like clean amps. I like amps that are pushed, I like amps that have a lot of low mids, a lot of body to the sound, if you will, and in particular, I just really like this amp. So I'm going to take you through some tones. I'm going to use a couple different guitars, and I'm going to let you hear how it sounds with just the amp, and I'll even throw in some effects so you can hear how it takes pedals. I know that's a big part of how a lot of us play, certainly a very important part to how I play when I'm either playing live or doing sessions, so I'll let you hear it with some wet effects as well. But I will say this, I'm not going to use any kind of compression or fuzz or overdrive pedals or anything like that. So any dirty sounds that you hear are going to be just the amp. I'll use my Strymon El Capistan for a little bit of delay and my Strymon Flint for some reverb and maybe even some tremolo. So without further ado, let's hear it. My recording chain for this one, very simple. I'm going guitar into pedal board, various effects which you will see labeled on the screen when they are on or off, Sir Badger 18, Bad Cat 112 cab into my Cascade Fathead ribbon microphone, from that microphone going into my Universal Audio Apollo Twin, no effects or EQ added, and being recorded into Ableton Live 10. Super simple. Let's hear what she sounds like. Thank you. 
So this amp does cleans really well. It's got that classic kind of Marshall sort of chime from these EL84s, but it's also got a lot of great low end. It can do really great jazzy cleans, and it can handle pedals super well, as you could hear in that clip. I mean, I was using a lot of reverb and delay and still had good note articulation and plenty of control. And honestly, I had plenty of volume left to go up and add even more headroom. So this amp can do the clean thing. But my favorite thing that this amp does is its dirty tones. <laughs> So you could probably hear in that clip, this amp can do that great pushed overdrive thing super well. I mean, it's really chewy. There's a lot of low mid-range content that just gives it that punch and it just honestly sounds so good. Now, this amp can get really nasty too. I mean, it does the clean thing, ambient thing super well, and even without using the effects loop, you could hear how good it sounded, how well you could still hear the strings and the pick attack and all of that. But even in the overdriven pushed mode, there was still a ton of definition. I was able to clean up just a little bit with my volume knob and get a wide range of tones. But there's one more trick that this amp has, and that is just full blown, wide open rock and roll. This amp can scream. Literally, scream. I wasn't kidding. It's going to scream. So I for sure damaged my hearing playing that loud in this video. You're not going to be able to tell, but that last mode with the Gibson and everything on about seven is just roaring loud. I mean, this amp really could handle, I think, any venue, especially mic'd up. You're not going to have any problems. The 18 watts is severely misleading. 
I've owned amps that were higher wattage that were not nearly that loud. And especially through that 112 cap, it sounds great. Now, these amps can be had for under $1,000 for the head. Everything's trending a little high right now at the end of 2020, but especially if you can get your hands on one of these earlier kind of version one heads, if you will, you can find them a little bit cheaper. Now, if you think something like the MOSFET foot switchable boost or the all black colorway speaks to you on the newer one, then go for that. But honestly, this amp doesn't leave me wanting anything else. It really is that good. I mean, I own this amp and I own a Kemper, and the Kemper covers the other ground that I need when using an amp. But this amp goes with me to every session, more or less every gig, because it really just does sound that good. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite amp. And also let me know what you think about the Badger 18. That's all for this video and I will see you guys in the next one.